my name is Renee LaValle McKenna. I'm a therapist and shamanic healer. And Raya is joining me from Berlin today to do some inner work. And I think you found me through my podcast, Spiritual Psychology. Yep. Awesome. And uh, I'm so glad that you like my podcast. Sometimes when I'm recording all by myself, I think, am I crazy? Does anybody listen to this? <laughs> well, thank you for making it. <laughs> Please keep it going. <laughs> I will. It's, it's one of my favorite, it's one of my favorite creative things to do. We were just talking about being creative. So there's a lot of different kinds of work we can do today. Did you have anything specific in mind or do you want me to offer you some ideas? I'd like to hear more from you actually. Okay. So the basis of the spiritual psychology work that I do is about connecting people with higher consciousness or the life force or their own higher self, however they understand it. And everybody has their own kind of unique paradigm of understanding spiritual or transpersonal connection. And so Usually the first piece of work that I do with people is to connect them either with an element or a spirit guide or an aspect of their own higher self. Um, so I don't know if any of those are of interest to you. Definitely. So I've never done any of these before and I've tried so many <laughs> different things. I've dabbled with pretty much everything <laughs> I've come across that I found interesting. So I'd be excited to try it. So the two options that I would offer, one is to connect um, with a guide or an element just through nature, because nature, in my experience, is the most easily accessible pathway to connect with spirit. Um, the other would be to connect with your own um optimal self that's lived your optimal life what Carl Jung calls the golden shadow and that's kind of an older part of ourself that has already lived our optimal path that can help us to show us how to get there so I don't know if you the second option definitely sparked my interest okay I like to give people because we all have our own things so and that was kind of my instinct that might be helpful for you so um this is a guided visualization or what I call an inner journey. And so basically we're just going to do some body relaxation, let your conscious mind take kind of a rest. So you'll be able to be open and curious, but we'll make sense of it later. We're going to open to a more non-rational, intuitive, more body centered or even creative ways of knowing and gathering information. So however that comes, some people are visual, some people are more auditory or kinesthetic, they body felt um, or emotional. So we'll see what happens for you and what comes um, as we seek to connect with an aspect of your own best or highest self that has your optimal evolution and path in mind and what they have to offer. Sounds great. Awesome. So are you okay sitting? Yeah, I'm very Perfect. comfortable. Perfect. Okay. So just take a moment, Raya, and um, just bring your awareness into your body and come present. And just really allowing yourself to notice all the places that your body meets the chair. And if your feet are touching the floor, just noticing where your feet are and where your hands are, and where your head is. Maybe bringing awareness to your breath. You might notice how your breath is like a bridge between your outer world and your inner world. As we begin to take a journey to the transpersonal realms that have only your highest good in mind to connect with an aspect of your own higher self, your own psyche, your inner wisdom, it has lived your optimal life and is available in present time to help you along that path. So maybe taking a moment and just opening your inner senses of sight and sound, taste, 
touch, smell, instinct, and intuition, just allowing those all to open quite widely, knowing it's safe to do that. And I wonder, Raya, if you can sense or feel or imagine that you are going to visit a very dear old friend. This is an older person at the end of their best life. And we're going to visit them in their home. And just whatever comes up, if you sense or feel or imagine, where would they live? Are they in a neighborhood or in a natural setting? It might be near the beach or the forest. And just whatever comes, knowing you can talk to me loudly and clearly to describe your experience. What's the environment or ecosystem that presents itself as we consider going to visit this wise old friend. For some reason I'm crying. <laughs> so just allowing the energy to flow, this is a very opening and connecting process. Hmm. And if you sense or feel or imagine an ecosystem or environment, where does this wise old being live? Does it need to make any sense? Do they have a house or an apartment or a cottage? I feel like none of these things. She's mm -hmm. kind of in a very isolated place. Mm -hmm. And describe this isolated place, if you can open your awareness to the environment where she is. Is it day or night? It's day. Mm -hmm. um, it's on a, on a hill um, overlooking the water and there's no, no um, houses or anything really around mm. or people. And how does it feel to be in this place with her on this hill? Well, I'm still crying. <laughs> I feel a little sad. And what is sad? What is she like? How is she feeling? She seems great. I'm, I'm the one who said. <laughs> Can you describe her to me? She's smiling. She's calm. She's <laughs> making jokes. She's happy to see me. Mm -hmm. I think I'm sad for something that she's not sad about. Mm. 
Does she understand your sadness? I think so, yeah. Hmm. And what is her relationship with this sadness? she she knows that I don't know <laughs> that it's actually not bad at all <laughs> and that she loves her life <laughs> and do you know what it is that feels so sad for you the fact that she's there by herself <laughs> is there anything she wants to do or communicate or teach you right now? Something like... So not really teach me <laughs> because it's something that I can only just experience with time. Mm -hmm. She wants to tell me something like, um, I mean, I only get the feeling of it, but I don't know, it's almost like, She's on on one side of um, a mountain, and I'm on the other. Mm. And I I still don't know what it's going to be like. And she, mm. yeah, she already walked the the path and knows. Mm. How does she feel about you? She feels very loving, understanding, and she she identifies with me a lot more than I <laughs> identify with her. And how is it to feel her love and understanding and identification? It feels really nice and I, it feels authentic. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just feel like I, almost like I can't return it. <laughs> that makes sense. Like I can't reciprocate it properly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, the way I would like to. Mm -hmm. Does she need anything from you? No. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And so how is it to just receive in this way? Notice how it feels in your body to be with unconditional love, compassion, understanding. Mm. Just really grounding yourself to be able to hold such a powerful, pure and high resonance. Just to receive and receive and receive understanding, love, acceptance. How is it to receive in this way, Raya? I feel a little bit inadequate. <laughs> Almost like I don't know how, or maybe I feel a little bit like... Like a bad person. <laughs> and what does she think about your ideas about yourself? She gets it. She thinks it's <laughs> a little bit funny. <laughs> <laughs> but how, she knows what it's like. And how is it to be with her humor? I can relate to her humor. <laughs> I think that's the, our connecting point. And so growing in the ability to receive is very important and transformative. And can she help you learn how to receive in this way? She definitely seems like she's learned it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And so perhaps we can practice, ask her, is it okay if we practice receiving right now? She said, yep. Yeah. So I wonder, Raya, if you can sense or feel or imagine that she pours her energy into you. You might notice where it leaves her form and where it enters your body. It might enter in the top of your head, your throat your chest, your belly, your palms, or some other way. The energy may have a quality, texture or color, or it might not. And where does the energy enter your body, Raya? Somewhere um, here. Mm -hmm. throat, I guess. Mm -hmm. So just being present and allowing. You don't need to do anything but be relaxed and open and practice receiving. And you might feel a feeling sensation or you might not. As this transmission of love and understanding, acceptance and humor flow all the way down to the soles of your feet, and out to the tips of your fingers and up to the crown of your head, 
filling you, infusing and integrating into every cell and system, every layer and level of your body, your mind, your emotions, your energy system. Even and receiving and receiving. The acceptance and love, humor and understanding of this wise, happy and grounded part of your own higher self. Mm. Taking all the time you need, allowing that energy to flow wherever it wants to flow. Let me know when that feels complete, Raya. Now it feels complete. And how is it to receive in this way? Really relaxing. Mm. So really feeling that relaxation of receiving and how that feels in your body, just noticing. I wonder if there's anything else that you notice about receiving love and understanding and acceptance and humor in this way. I still have these tiny um, reactions of resistance to it. Like sometimes my throat starts to dance up, mm -hmm. or I, I, I can feel some kind of discomfort or unrest. Mm -hmm. Almost like, okay, okay, now it's enough. <laughs> you can stop. Mm -hmm. So, this is practicing, mm -hmm. not, not perfect, right? And is there anything that she wants to do or communicate with you about receiving unconditional love and acceptance, humor and understanding in this way? that I'm not taking anything from her. <laughs> mm. How is it to hear that you are not taking anything from her by receiving in this way? Mm. 
it makes me cry. <laughs> but everything makes me cry, <laughs> as we know. In fact, this is a deep teaching about sharing love, acceptance, humor, and understanding. What is she teaching you about sharing these things? that sharing them is a source of connection and not, not some kind of <laughs> some kind of dynamic in which one person gets harmed or loses something and <laughs> the other one gains something. In fact, what happens to her energy when she offers love and understanding, humor and acceptance to you. She feels great. <laughs> mm -hmm. So she is not offering you her life energy in a way that depletes her. No. I wonder if she can show you how these very high resonances flow through her and benefit her as they come to you. What is her source of unconditional love, acceptance, humor, and understanding? She is deeply connected with the larger system, like a lamp plugged into a outlet in the wall that shares its light with you. The lamp is not diminished when people sit in its light. How is it to consider this? Sounds really nice. <laughs> Is there anything else that she wants to do or communicate with you about that, about connecting through love and humor and understanding?
and that I'm being a little bit too harsh. Mm. So either <laughs> not discerning at all, or mm-hmm. if I have a negative experience, just completely, I prefer no connection at all, <laughs> rather than. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people have that experience. Not knowing how to be discerning of when to open and when to close. Mm -hmm. Can she help you to grow in that ability and skill to know when to open and when to close? She said it's almost like eating something that you really don't like and then starving yourself for a really long time because of that experience. Mm-hmm. So she said just find something else to eat, mm-hmm. but don't starve yourself. Is she available as a source and a resource for wisdom and guidance as you grow in your ability to choose new food to eat? She says she's going to be there on her on her hill mm-hmm. if I need her. Is there anything else that wants to be done or communicated between you to be complete with this for now, knowing that she is always available for you if you choose to connect with her? can I keep this part to myself (laughs) absolutely absolutely I think that's a good choice and so when you're ready Raya you might take a moment and say thank you And I wonder if you can sense or feel or imagine that there's a path or a stairway that returns from this place back into ordinary reality. It might lead to a natural place you've been before. It might lead right back into your home or someplace nearby. And traveling that path or stairway bringing all of this back with you, remembering everything fully and take all the time you need and open your eyes when you feel ready. And as you come fully back into present time, I wonder, Raya, if you can take a moment and sense, feel, or imagine calling her energy into the room with you right now. And where would she be in relation to you? 
She might be beside you, behind you, in front of you, above you, within you. Behind me. <laughs> and how is it to have her here in this way? <laughs> It's very nice. I like her. <laughs> and how does she feel to be here? <laughs> I feel like she enjoys every environment you put her in. <laughs> so I want you to notice how easily and naturally you made that connection. And that that is always available to you, whether you're alone or with others, whether you're busy or at rest. As a source, and a resource to grow in the skills and ability to share and to receive and to learn to connect and when it is helpful to open and when it might be a good choice to close. As you grow in your wisdom in sharing unconditional love and acceptance, understanding and humor in all areas of your life. Hmm. Is there any last words that she has for you or for us? Because she's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> She's uh, <laughs> mocking the fact that I haven't really <laughs> furnished my place, even though I've lived here for months. <laughs> she's, she thinks I need to get at least a little like, comfortable place to sit in. <laughs> Life is too short. <laughs> Life is too short. Allow yourself to nest. Mm. Very nice. Raya, thank you so much for sharing so deeply. Thank you as well. <laughs> really beautiful process. And I'm available if you want to keep in touch about your process. And if you ever want to do any more work, that would be a pleasure. Thank you. Mm. So just be with that. You might want to journal a little bit. Definitely drink some water. And I will and enjoy exploring this new inner relationship. Thank you so much for facilitating this. Blessings on your path. Thank you.